Everybody say hello to Frida. It's our new puppy. Hi all, welcome back to the channel. So today I am doing a huge art haul. And so I just thought I'd hop on, show you the supplies. I'm gonna test out a few of them for you so you can kind of see how they perform. Some of them I've already tried out and I have my thoughts on and then others are still in the package. So let's hop in because there is quite a few of items to go over. All right, so starting out, we're just gonna go straight to my scotch tape. Had to get some more of these. If you know me well, I love this like teal seafoam green color. So uh, for me, scotch tape is super helpful for like when I'm using, I guess I could pull out another supply. So like I have these big drawing boards. I just bought this one. I really liked the handle. I liked how uh, transportable it is when it's uh, taped down and then you have this handle so I can carry it in between rooms. So in combination with this, it does come with like a huge rubber band as well, but using the scotch tape to tape down drawings and or paintings that I'm doing is a very helpful uh, tip, or for me, I feel like it's something that you should have with you at all times. I also have used painter's tape, also very good, but you're spending a lot more money on painter's tape. So those are the first two things. Uh, then I had also bought, so I've been drawing a lot more uh, in my sketchbooks, both my 100 heads uh, sketchbook and then my other sketchbook as well. So I was in need of some more blending stumps. So I got this nice set on Amazon, comes with uh, the sandpaper, and then just various sizes of those blending stumps. And then it also came with one of these. So I plan to use this with my uh, Prismacolors that are super short, almost into the like rest in peace category. Uh, I guess we could straight go into uh, the pencils I have bought. I have all of the colors of the Prismacolor set, but here recently I've actually been out of the color artichoke. Dick Blick just happened to have those in the other day, so bought two of them. Excited to now have all the colors again. I was also getting low on my 10% French gray, so got that. I'm also starting to dabble into using watercolor pencils. It's not really something that I've done a whole lot with, and so I just got four new colors. And let's see, just tell me what, I got a mahogany, an ivory black, a azurite blue, someone don't kill me for pronouncing that wrong, I apologize in advance, uh, and then purple violet. So I have never tried out this brand before. If you have suggestions on like great brands to try out, let me know. Uh, I will be showing these here in a little bit on how I thought they performed so far. Very happy with the overall performance on those. And then I bought some white charcoal pens. I have been doing a little bit more with uh, graphite and charcoal. So just wanted to have something to create those super bright whites. And I got a fun new gel pen. It's a zebra gel pen in the 0.5. Loved the color. I uh, thought that this would be fun for uh, doing some of the 100 heads challenge with. So stay tuned for more on that. And then still in the drawing category, I got some of these uh, eraser pencils from Hobby Lobby. And you may have remembered that I bought some eraser pencils a while back per a suggestion uh, when I was at Dick Blick. And these ones just seem to have like a more firm eraser. I don't want to call it lead because that's not lead, but like more firm eraser than the ones I bought. Um, downside is it doesn't have like the uh, little brush at the end to help move those specks off your paper. And yeah, I... I definitely do like the fact that it is a firmer eraser than the other brand that I was using, but the brush is kind of handy. I'm not going to lie. At first, thought it would be a gimmick. I kind of enjoy it. And then 
So here I have a couple unopened and a couple opened. Let me grab those. All right. So some of you may be thinking, Rachel, those are makeup brushes. You start showing makeup? <laughs> no. Uh, I really like these for blending graphite. And then I also recently, oh, and the lid's not fully on this. Perfect. That sounds dangerous. Bought some graphite powder. I have not used graphite powder before. And so using the brushes in combination with the graphite powder just has, uh, I found that it creates really nice bases. And then along the same lines of drawing, I had seen a bunch of people using battery operated erasers. So uh, I like the Ahuhu alcohol markers and figured why not try out their uh, battery operated eraser as well. As you can see, haven't opened it up yet, but I look forward to trying this out. And then I needed some more workable fixative. So got another can of these. I use this in my sketchbook on uh, graphite drawings. I mean, I use it on a lot of stuff. So I'm kind of surprised at how quickly I go through it just because, I don't know, maybe I'm using too much. Can you use too much? Anywho, I like using it in my sketchbook just because then I'm yeah, not as worried about like things transferring over. And then I also bought, let me make this more pretty. I bought some more of the Blackwing pencils. Previously, I was just using the natural. And so I bought some of the pearl and I also bought some of the matte. And just to show you guys what these pencils look like. So super pretty, love the eraser, very nice. Uh, I love the variety of pencil marks that I can get with these pencils. They, yeah, it'll be a staple for life in my uh, drawing packs. And then I like that I bought them in sets of 12 because being able to uh, share the wealth with other artist friends so they can also fall in love with them. And then let's see, we'll do this one next. So bought a new container of Bristol. Uh, as you may already know, uh, I really love the Canson Bristol. I like how tolerant it is to using alcohol markers or like multiple levels of watercolor. And so um, just branching out, I wanted a bigger piece of Bristol. So I've used the Strathmore a long time ago, but I don't remember the performance. So just trying something new. And then is that all? That's not all drawing. All right. So got a bigger uh, ruler. So super long ruler. Like the fact that it is uh, see-through just from being able to see like the page or like back here I'm working on this canvas board. And so being able to see where those marks are without having to like lift it up or keep moving. And then... I did get some of this removable adhesive. So I'd seen other people use these in both like charcoal drawings, graphite drawings, and then also with their paints just to block off a section that they weren't wanting that color to go to. I have never done that. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little intimidated by trying that out, but hey, I'll try it out on something smaller in a sketchbook or something like that. And who knows, maybe I will really like using that and having that in my tool arsenal. And then that's about it for drawing. I do have three new sketchbooks. Uh, I got another one of the Zeta series from Stillman and Byrne. Uh, this is the same uh, sketchbook that I'm using for my 100 heads. And so far I have been very impressed with it. I really like how smooth the paper is. And then I got a like cute little one and another adorable little one. Uh, not sure what I'll use these for, but uh, like having them here. I have also tried the beta series. I will say that it's more of a toothier green paper and I'll make sure to show that in this video as well, just so you can kind of compare them side by side. I think that's something to keep in mind on what you're gonna be using that sketchbook for. Uh, I don't mind the toothier green for uh, gouache or 
maybe like, I don't know how to say this eloquently, but like uh, bigger materials, but like finer materials, like pencils or something I'm wanting to really be able to blend out, like colored pencils. I don't really like the uh, grainier paper. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. All right, so let's hop into the polymer clay. Uh, I fell in love with polymer clay when I was working on my Cruella costume. So like to be able to create some of the things that were part of her costume. And yeah, I just wanted to be able to play around with it more. And so I bought a bunch of colors and these are actually not all of them. So this is just four of the colors. I had a ton of different colors for the Cruella costume and a ton of supplies for that. <laughs> I'm not going to break down the Cruella costume unless you guys like really want me to, which I can. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I really like the polymer clay. Uh, what you may not know about me is that I love plants. I have fallen in love with plants. So I really want to create like some plant uh, flower or even just like plant leaf earrings. I think that'd be kind of fun. So I got these oval clay cutters and then I bought this huge set on Amazon and it just has a whole smorgasbord full of stuff. So I got different modeling tools. Let's see. I haven't even like fully looked at all this. Stamps for it, I assume. A little rolling pin. I'm assuming that's like a little knife because it says it's sharp more decorative stuff plastic knives and then just like a we'll call it a cutting board to be able to put all of that on so yeah that was that big uh section of stuff for polymer clay I haven't really played around with it a whole lot but I look forward to the challenge and I don't know maybe I'll have some out and they'll be in people's Christmas presents who knows? Um, all right. And then on to the same line of Christmas. I bought some of this. I think it's... Cross stitch yarn? I don't even know what it is. We'll call it cross... Cross stitch? That's a thing, right? Yeah? Um... So I got two different colors here. I am working on some ornaments uh, that I am going to be making with my kids. So I liked the green, so it'll blend in with the tree. Won't be as noticeable. And then I guess on to painting. So I bought one of, or a pack of these from Hobby Lobby. They are just little trays. At first, I wasn't sure if I would like that they were like separated sections, but I found that it's been really great with like the gouache that I bought to be able to mix a color. The one I'm using right now is over there. I'm too lazy to walk that far. <laughs> uh, but yes, so far really like these. I bought a round canvas, nothing fancy, just a 16 inch round canvas uh, and not sure what I'm gonna put on it, but I like the different shaped canvas. And so I bought the red and then bought some more of these. So just be able to move, uh, paint around on a canvas. I have a couple painting ideas I wanna do with my kids for the holidays. And so thought it would be fun for them to be able to play with these too, cause that's half the fun of having all these art supplies, right? And then I got a watercolor set. So nothing crazy just a bunch of different colors I've used this a few times I really like how small and compact it is nice little case very easy to be able to fit in my plain air bag uh, when I go out and sketch at coffee shops or just out in my backyard so that is super convenient I do like the size and the color range and then I guess we'll go into this so uh, some of you may have seen the jelly gouache that I bought on Amazon. So here are the 12 brushes that come with it. 
uh, one of the viewers actually pointed out that it says Ainting Brush. Yes, I noticed that as well. I don't know why the P is missing. It's not on the plastic that it came in. Not sure why that is. Uh, now this set, while it does have a variety of different brushes available in it, I wouldn't say it's the most impressive set. So like, I think that one was the one that was coming loose. Nope. There's a few of them that I like had to re, oh, there we go, re-glue on there. And then uh, like for the flats, I had to go in and use a pair of scissors and just get rid of some of the stray hairs. So as long as you go into it knowing that they're not going to like knock your socks off, they are a pretty base level painting brush. And as long as you don't mind like re-gluing the tops on, I would say not bad overall. And then my huge jelly gouache set. Just opening that up. So it's big. It is hefty. That would be probably my only complaint is just like how heavy it is. I'm not going to carry this out painting anywhere with me. But I look at that color range. Amazing. And so they're just little, uh, I mean, I refer to them as like little pudding cups of paint. <laughs> Not edible. Uh, they don't smell bad. Uh, but yeah, I have really liked using these. I will continue using it here at home. It does come with the little handles on the top of the case, but if I'm being completely honest, I would not trust them just because it is like, I don't know if you can see how much that, yeah. I just don't trust the little locks on the side to keep holding their place. And my fear is that if I continued holding it on just those little handles that it would fall and go everywhere and then I'd cry and we don't need that. And I think this is it, right? I don't know, that was a lot to go through. Uh, I'm not gonna go through each of these colors, but I have slowly tried to get back into oil painting to like dabble back into oils. And it's been a while since I've painted with oil paint. Uh, so a lot of my colors were seized up. So had to get a few new colors. And I'm trying out a, a variety of different brands. If you guys do have brands that you suggest, please comment below. I am always looking for new brands to try, especially if there's something that you get, you know, really good coverage or you like the overall performance and that the price doesn't like break the bank because I really enjoy playing with lots of art materials, but you know, you got to kind of limit yourself because <laughs> sometimes when I get up to the checkout, I'm a little shocked at uh, the overall price, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Anywho, uh, let's hop right into testing out these plies so you guys can see their overall performance. All right, so starting out, we're going to try out these Caran d'Ache watercolor pencils. So I'm going to do a little bit of a gradient scale and work darker from the left and then slowly go lighter. And I will have to say, I loved the way that these pencils laid down on the paper. They are so smooth and velvety. I got the best impression even before going in with the water. And as I added in water, I was so impressed with how pigmented these pencils were and how well that color pulled from the left to the right and just continue maintaining a really light color throughout. Uh, this blue is a super beautiful color. I cannot wait to do that as like an underpainting for some gouache or just stand alone. Although I will have to say that the brown is my favorite of these four colors that we tested out. And staying along the same theme, I thought we'd go into other pencils. So here I am testing out that artichoke. I love this color. It's kind of a greenish, goldish yellow. And I used it a lot for both portraits and uh, for plant drawings. So having it back in my tool arsenal of colored pencils is always something that makes me happy. Up next, we have that Prismacolor 
10% French gray, and I use this color all the time. It is a little hard to see here on this paper, but I love it for being able to bring in some of those brighter lights without going all the way to, you know, a white. Up next, we have the Zebra Gel Pin in a 0.5, and in the store and at home, I do love this color. I just think it's going to end up not necessarily working for what I had originally intended. I had hoped to use it in my 100 head sketchbook to work on some portraits, but it's not laying down as light of lines as I had hoped for. So maybe something where I will draw out the portrait and then maybe gouache over it. I don't know. We'll see. Now on to the Blackwing Matte. Now this is the softest of the four core Blackwing models and it is great if you're looking for a soft dark line pencil. The variation in marks that you can get are just phenomenal. In comparison I have the Blackwing Pearl which is a little bit firmer than the Blackwing Matte and it also has a wide variety of marks that it can create. I think this would be great for doing illustrations or like if you're doing typography or calligraphy to be able to begin your background sketch. And just as an additional comparison, here is the Blackwing Natural, which is the pencil that started my love obsession with this brand. And I use it all the time. It is great for line work or fine details. And once again, you get those great variation of line marks with this pencil. Now I'm going in with one of those brushes and just lightly going over the section that I created just so you can see what I mean by when I say that those brushes really help blend out the graphite. Here we have that graphite powder and I'm not going to lie, I was pretty shocked at how well that this worked. I kind of thought it was a little gimmicky. I like how well it actually adds a nice base to a drawing when you're, you know, just trying to get a little bit of coverage. However, maybe I'm doing it wrong, but trying to actually really build up a color I've found is a lot more difficult. So I don't know if it's the brand I'm using or if I'm just not doing it right, but being able to actually work in a base has been nice. Onto a tool that I feel is underrated, and it is eraser. If you can find a good eraser, the ability to be able to create those lighter lights is huge. And I am actually really enjoying that this is a firmer eraser than the other brand I was using, shown here. However, the brush on the back of that is so stinking convenient. At first, I was worried that it was gimmicky and I would never use it, but it is nice to be able to move those little erase section, whatever, particles of the eraser off of my sheet, and having that there makes it so nice, and so I kind of miss that on the new pencil. Finally, I wanted to show you the difference between those papers for the Stillman and Burn sketchbooks that I got. So this first one here is 270 GSM. It is an extra heavyweight, white, smooth surface. So great for all kinds of mixed media. I have loved it throughout using my 100 head sketchbook. And then here is the cold press surface. So this is that beta series, also 270 GSM, but it's a little toothier than the Zeta series. I hope you guys enjoyed this huge art supplies haul from things I bought on Amazon, Dick Blick, Michaels, and Hobby Lobby. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. See you again soon.